You know what's coming with every single client. There's probably, you know, 10 or 12 key mistakes. I would estimate that at least 90% of clients are making eight or nine of those mistakes. When we're well put together in a stylish outfit, we don't just look better, we feel better too. But there are some classic pitfalls that many of us make and are completely unaware of until now. Here to set us right is the master of adding magic to everyday outfits, and that's personal stylist Melissa Morell, who has won a legion of followers thanks to her practical style advice, which she shares through her hugely popular YouTube channel. I've linked it below, and it's definitely worth subscribing to. Today, she's gonna to reveal the most common styling mistakes that she sees among her many clients, and you're bound to recognize some that you might be making yourself. I tick just about every box. The good news is she has some brilliant tips for turning frumpy into fabulous and she's going to share them with us now. Melissa, it's so good to have you back. Thank you so much for being here again. Thank you for inviting me again. How long ago was it? Was it like a year ago, was it? I think it was around, maybe slightly later in the year, but around this time last year, in our last conversation, mm. I had, when we talk about styling mistakes, I don't know if you remember, I had the stripy tank top on right. and I had a black bodysuit underneath and I was against a dark background so you couldn't even see my arms <laughs> and as you were talking I just had this moment of realization like I look like a complete mess here and I'm talking to a brilliant personal stylist. <laughs> Thank you but you know the one thing I always say to people is when I'm off duty I'm off duty I'm never looking at anybody else really I'm looking when my client is in front of me but when my friend is in front of me at the school gates or things like that go straight over me I'm too worried about my own appearance than yours so no, never worry about anything like that. But you know mm. I was curious to know that because I definitely get times especially I think these days, if I go out, which I'm doing more, I go out without makeup and, um, you know, I'm just in jeans, I'm walking the dog. I can sometimes just have these kind of times of frumpiness where I'm just feeling a bit kind of dowdy and down on myself. And I think I look at you every time I see you, you're immaculate. Obviously, that's your job. But do you get times, days that you think, oh, you know, yes. not looking my best? Yes, yes and yes. All the time. Frumpy feeling? You get the frumpy feeling? Yes, I get the frumpy feeling more late at night when you have literally just thrown on anything, you know, that was thrown over your bed, over your chair type of thing. Um, but, yeah, there's a part of my job which makes me feel like I do have to be relatively presentable all the time. But then the other part of my job means that my wardrobe is completely mix and match because that's that's what I preach. So it yeah. doesn't really matter whether I pick out my leggings for dog walking in and my wellies or my trainers or my big coat or my wool coat, it all goes. And you yes. can trade a lot when everything mixes and matches well. So um, I think I'm lucky in that respect. But yeah, of course I get the frumpy days. And remember when I'm, when you see me, Mm -hmm. You're seeing me when I want you to see me on Instagram yes. or on YouTube. So, you know, I've done my hair. I've done things like that. Often you'll see me with my phone against my face like that. And I'm literally <laughs> trying to cover up the fact that I haven't got a scrap of makeup on or anything. Um, so, yeah. In short, that's a crafty manoeuvre. If only I could record videos like that. Just, just speak yeah. to the camera with my phone over my face. That would be some days. That would be perfect. I tell you what. Well, do you know this is the very basis of what we're talking about, which is why I think fashion can be seen as frivolous sometimes. But actually, when you get those days and moments like that, and I can get it when I'm interviewing people, you know, beautiful people like you and so on, and it's chipping away at my confidence. I'm sitting there, kind of analysing myself, and we all get that in the workplace when we're out, mm -hmm. and suddenly we feel like we've haven't we've we haven't matched things up quite well and we're just aware that we're looking a bit shabby yeah. and it does chip away at you so actually to be able to follow in your footsteps and, and pull together a kind of capsule wardrobe that we're able to match things cleverly and well is what yeah. today's all about yeah. these days it's so easy to do that because there's so many people show well there's so many people showing you how to do it on their bodies <laughs> the key is to find somebody who is showing you how to do it on somebody that matches your lifestyle 
and your bodies. Um, so obviously that's what we try and do on our YouTube channel by bringing different people in of all different shapes and sizes. But in terms of you looking at your favorite influencer on Instagram, try and home in on somebody that is very like-minded with yourself, with your lifestyle, because then you can literally copy exactly what is going on or make little tweaks you know if you've got bigger boobs or whatever but generally that's your blueprint because you're following them because you like their style so don't try and reinvent the wheel if it fits in with your lifestyle where it's difficult and where people um, make the mistakes is that they follow somebody with a completely different body shape to them and that's in heels all the time and the reality is you work from home and you have got your Ugg boots on every day well then let's follow somebody who is constantly constantly styling the casual look up all the time you know so that yeah so the blueprints are out there for you and what you're very good at and what you did so brilliantly the last time we spoke was gave really practical pointers around the different cuts that you should be wearing to accentuate yeah. some body parts that you want to accentuate and yeah. flatter tone down other areas and I, I thought that was excellent but I'm aware that when it actually comes to styling day to day, um, you know, we can still make a lot of mistakes beyond the kind of sh shape and cut of the clothing that we're, we're yeah. making. I mean, when clients come to you, what what kind of mistakes do you routinely see? What, what, what jumps out at you as being a very common mistake? Do you know what? There are, there, are, there are locks. So we obviously have an online styling course where we teach people how to become stylists. The biggest chapter is on styling mistakes that we see in our clients. Because you actually, you know what's coming with every single client. There's probably, you know, 10 or 12 key mistakes. And I, I would estimate that at least 90% of clients are making eight or nine of those mistakes. So as a stylist, like learning to become a stylist, you you know what you're entering and you've got, you've got your kit and your armor to sort that out and usually they are the smallest mistakes that can be rectified and it makes such a huge difference on a client as well so um you know we could go through loads but let, let's start off with quite a generic one today so that is that most clients only style one part of their body frame and usually it's the part of their body frame that they are most conscious of so right. let's take, for example, the lady who has, um, well, it's myself, the lady who's got the larger bottom and larger thighs, okay? She will shop um, everywhere for the most perfect pair of trousers. And hopefully she finds it and she feels really good in those trousers until she comes home and then she puts any old top on and any old, and any old pair of shoes and she looks in the mirror and she's like, well, my trousers no longer look good on me. Like, why? They fit me perfectly. What's happening? And it's because she's not dressing from head to toe. So in our online styling sessions that we do, I'm constantly saying, move the camera back, move the camera back, because I can't style you unless I see your feet literally to the floor, to your head. I can't see, you know, do this to there because people don't look at you from here to here, unless you're on a Zoom call like we are, <laughs> which is very easy because you can wear your Ugg boots underneath. Um, not so today. Not today. No, is that in case I asked you what you had underneath? <laughs> Even though you couldn't see them last time, I still felt frumpy in them. So that was a lesson. <laughs> um, so, yeah, not styling from head to toe is the, the biggest mistake. And it's when they do that, it sets you up then for lots of other mistakes. Because when you style from head to toe, you should be styling to recreate the hourglass shape or just to recreate, recreate balance. So in this lady that's got the bigger thighs, for example, and she just puts on maybe a strappy top to go with these brilliant pair of trousers. When she puts the strappy top on, it narrows her on the top. So what does it do to her thighs? It makes them look bigger. But then hold on a minute, she's got this perfect pair of trousers. So now the trousers are not so perfect. Where actually, yes, the trousers are perfect. You did really well in finding those, what you've neglected is the rest of you. So you needed to buy a top that was going to broaden you on your shoulders. 
Um, you needed to make sure that you were pairing the right pair of shoes with those trousers. We can very, very easily destroy a lovely pair of trousers with the wrong shoes. And that's another mistake I will come on to in a minute. Oh, good, because I think that is mm -hmm. a one that's probably the one I make most commonly because yeah. shoes are always an afterthought. So yeah, I'm, I'm no. looking forward to okay, well, that. Yeah, we can get straight onto it if you want and keep that conversation flowing because it is, it's one of the biggest mistakes that we see. And usually it's around black shoes, black rounded, rounded shoes or boots, you're nodding away, with blue jeans, with black jeans, with anything. The just go-to is the black boot. Got me. Yeah. You just nailed my look. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, everybody does it as well. Um, I had a client only yesterday, actually, where we put a lighter colour shoe on and a different, a more pointed shoe. It just transformed the outfit completely. Wow. And what happens is it's not that a pair of black shoes or boots is wrong. It's not that a rounded pair of black boots is wrong. It's what you are pairing it with is wrong. So, for example, if you, if you never want to get your shoes wrong, wear a cropped ankle grazer straight leg jean. They go with every type of shoe. They go with a flat loafer. They go with a heavier, more sturdy black boot that goes up the ankle. They go with a, a more um, feminine boot, you know, pointed and tight around the ankle. They go with everything. Put those same black boots with a long pair of baggier jeans and suddenly you look like my 16 year old daughter <laughs> who loves that look. <laughs> but suddenly on a 45, 50 year old woman, we look either like a workman or like we just don't give two hoots about what we're dressing like. A hundred percent, because I have those flared trousers and I really struggle to get the right shoes with it. Nothing looks right. Uh, yeah. Whereas today I'm in the straight crop jeans. Yeah. I've just got a pair of trainers on. Exactly. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, it goes with yeah. everything. So even, you know, we can take, turn that into a little bit of a mistake in terms of not having a cropped ankle grazer pair of jeans in your wardrobe. They suit absolutely every single shape and they go with every single pair of shoes. So include one of those in your wardrobe. And you okay, see. that's a must have for us all. And are you saying just to come back to this idea of the entire look? So what you're saying is, when we go to the mirror and we've got our pair of trousers that we think flatter us the most, yeah. our eyes are just always drawn to those trousers, whereas we need to be standing back, yeah. looking at the shirt we've paired with it and the shoes and yeah. analysing the whole thing from head to toe, which we don't naturally do at the moment, most yes. of us. Yeah. Absolutely, we do. I had a client two days ago in the States who kept saying she was doing this she was like look at my bust look it's just massive my bust is all the time and words have like, never left my mouth in my entire <laughs> life mine. like a black ski, ski run here <laughs> <laughs> yeah i get very envious with ladies like that and when she took a step back i was like you have got the most incredible figure and your bust is actually an asset because um, she, you know, she was a decent size 14 lady and had she have had a flat chest with a curvier look, then she would have been completely out of balance. Her bust was an asset rather than um, something to fear and something to hide. So I was saying, so I started dressing her from head to toe. I was like, forget about your bust for a minute because I, I was saying, try that jumper on. And she was like, that jumper makes me have a larger bust. And I said, just wait a minute, wait until I've done the entire outfit and then tell me whether you're looking at your larger bust or not. And we did exactly that. And she's like, oh my goodness, I love this. I'm going to wear this to, to, uh, to um, she was a professor. I was going to wear this to um, uni today. And I said, hold on a minute, you don't like that jumper because it makes your bust look bigger. She was like, oh, I haven't looked at my bust. Do you think it makes it look bigger? I'm like, no, it doesn't. That's my point. <laughs> my point is when you have considered the entire outfit, we're not looking at your bust. So and we re we re-put her back into this hourglass shape. And she looked amazing. So yeah. 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 And you must have accessories in that head to toe look as well. That's the make or break. 
Okay, another thing that I must say I fall down on and accessories, it's always like the afterthought. I've just got a yeah. few things that I'll pluck no. out of whatever is first in my line of sight. What kind of accessories are important? What look should we be going for right now, do you think? So, you know, I've got a big chain on right now. That is quite a deliberate statement piece of jewellery uh, because my top is quite plain. If I had a busier top on, perhaps like yourself, then I might have gone for something, you know, just more like that, just something a little bit more dainty in it. So we change our accessories up based on the outfit. So it, in fact, I think I covered this in not last week's video, but the video before, okay, where so I actually to that. showed the difference between a delicate piece of jewellery and how it can get lost on an outfit versus a statement piece. But then conversely, sometimes we need the delicate bit because we've gone really big with the earrings and we've got our you know our head tight uh, our hair tied back like that and we want it all about the earrings so then we don't want it about the necklace as well so just like in styling where you would have i don't know the long sleeve top um in white the short sleeve top in white the uh, vest top in white you've got different variations to fit in with your wardrobe the same applies to accessories and that includes the bags as well so a larger bag a shorter bag a, a bag for your lifestyle you need the same for jewelry so you need something more statementy, you need something a little bit lighter, you need something bigger. Because when I've got my hair up like that, I might want a big earring, but I don't also want something big down here. So we we approach accessories when we're styling in the same way as we do clothes. But it always has to be relevant to your lifestyle. So, for example, um, we had a lady who wanted a collection of designer bags a few weeks ago. And we, kind of, we, we stay away from showcasing any designer stuff and things like that because i'm meant to be styling the everyday woman and um a designer well, well as soon as you said it, i thought i'd like a collection of, of designer <laughs> bags as well is that is that <laughs> this particular client she came over for america she wanted a collection of bags um which was lovely so we just did that little bit on the channel just to show something different and i was trying to explain to the audience there that I needed to listen to her lifestyle because whilst she said I need a big brown bag, a small brown bag and a little brown bag, actually when I listened to her lifestyle, she didn't at all. She probably needed one bigger one when she had a computer with her and then she needed one at the weekend and there was nothing in between. And so you apply the same basis to accessories. If you don't go out with the big earrings in, then don't get the big earrings. You know, it always comes back to lifestyle. That's the only way you're going to end up wearing all your clothes is if you always bring it back to your, your body shape and your lifestyle. Well, that sounds so fun, somebody saying, help me pick out a collection of designer bags. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna to have to go and watch that because that's uh, that sounds like a feast for the eyes. <laughs> um, there's an interesting point there with that though, and accessories. I think when we, we say the word jewelry or handbags, these days we do think about having to spend a lot of money to get mm. something that looks right. I mean, where do you come in on that? Because there's a little bit of a, there's a, there is a cost benefit, if you can, to buy a couple of handbags or, you know, particular jewellery items. Like I have this one Hermes ring. It's probably the, one, like yeah. the most expensive. I've got a Tiffany bracelet as well. Yeah. There are just two things really yeah. <laughs> that I own that are really, that I, I put a little bit more into on the basis I thought, I think I could probably wear these for life. Yes. Um, they are not of a current trend. Yeah. And uh, similarly with handbags, I've got a couple of designer bags I mm -hmm. think will probably be with me for life. That's the, that's the basis I would spend something on. Yeah. Um, I mean, from day to day accessories, you're going for those kind of chunkier, um, you know, the necklace there. Yeah. It, it looks great, but what's, what's the kind of spend you think for most people? Yeah, well, I would say for, so on, on our channel, we work a lot with Monica Vinader and um, Misoma or Masoma, how I always say, okay. say it. And they are relatively expensive, but they're not going to break the bank. But their price point, they come in at anything from sort of £100 to maybe £300. So for a lot okay. of people, we are talking an investment piece because obviously yes. everybody's budget is different. So 
for me, I work so because they give me all their jewellery, that's what I wear all, all the time. And for me, it's about this jewellery. I can just send it back as soon as it tarnishes. So I don't bother taking it off in the shower all the time. I wear it. You're not meant to, but I do because it's easier for my lifestyle because I've always got it on. So for me, I'd rather spend the £100 on the bracelet rather than the £12.99 one from H&M because I can't be bothered to take it off every time I go in the shower. And I know that when it tarnishes, I send it back to Monica Vinader and Masoma and they send it straight back to me and it all looks lovely. Well, and they straight. clean it and send it back. Yeah, they clean it and they, they make it look good all the time. But still, I'm aware that that £100 is still very expensive for some people. So I think you can very easily go to the likes of H&M and um, places like that and get the look of all of this. And by taking care of it, you can still have it for just the, the same amount of time you know, we're not talking the same as a Hermes ring, obviously, or, you know, a completely 100% gold ring. But you can have it for a decent amount of time that when, you know, you've got your money's worth of seven ninety nine out of it, you're happy to replace it. And there's a lot of clients that prefer to stay up to date. And I would suggest that they go down that route rather than investing in the really nice handbag or the really nice jewellery. Um, that said myself like like you i have a couple of handbags that have been sentimental purchases have been you know bought to me from, by my husband and things like that and i might not use them all the time but boy i feel nice when i do yeah i'm just well my husband will be editing this so i'm glad you made that point that they've been bought by your husband <laughs> just i'm him. emphasizing that i'm putting the emphasis he on didn't that do comment. it willingly i had to force him Actually, he mentioned one of the Mulberry bags. You know, remember that Mulberry satchel bag, the brown satchel bag? That yeah, I do love has. the Mulberry stuff. And it's not an in-your-face label. You know, it's not... I hate to say, but the, the Louis Vuitton look has become quite overcooked, yes, you know? Yeah. Well, and um, you get so many fakes and things like that, isn't Exactly, it? yeah, yeah. 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 So that he, is, that's a lovely he, brand. He did buy me the satchel bag, you know, when we very first got together type of thing. And we had money to spend on each other and not on kids and mortgages and all of that and all of that. Those sort of days. Stuff. Yeah. But he says to me, I haven't seen you in that in ages. And I thought, no, I haven't had it out in ages. What a waste. Because mm, he did spend it. a lot of money proportionally at the time. That was a hell of a lot of money for him. And it is actually just sitting in the cupboard. So, you know, would he have been better at the time spending it on a cheaper option and replenishing it for me every two years? Who knows? But, you know, there are a couple in there that I love. So I think it's down to every single person and their budget. But I think what's important to say is you can create the same look. You don't need a lot of money to do so. I do think there's something in buying one or two things um, or, you know, getting them as gifts or whatever, if, if you have somebody generous enough that uh, might hold its value. Yes. Which was my logic with the two jewellery pieces I bought. Yes. This was actually the Hermes ring, surprisingly, was just yes. a few hundred, which is still a lot. So most I've spent on jewellery yes. for myself, but I thought that would hold its value. Yeah, it, and it will, and it will hold its value more than a generic piece from Monica Vinader. Um, well, because it's got the brand name. So certainly from an investment point of view, handbags are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, but equally, if you are the sort of person like me that flings them on the bottom of a changing room floor every two minutes and they're getting dirty, then buying them as an investment isn't probably the route I should go down. OK, gosh, some great pointers there already. What else kind of stands out from those clients that walk through the door? You must do an instant kind of scan and yeah. multiple well, things come up. The biggest thing is when we go to a client's house, whether they're having a full wardrobe restyle or what we call a concierge service, which is where we take clothes along. If they've just gone for a wardrobe restyle where we don't need to take any clothes, we still take them. And the clothes that we take with us to help us style are white tops because nobody has ever got enough white tops in their wardrobe. And so that is our styling kit. If I wouldn't ever dream to go to a client's house without white tops on my rail. Now, a lot of people will say they don't like white. White doesn't suit them. Um, it makes them look pale. Um, I drop food down it all the time. We hear every excuse. I'm a messy person. Doesn't it mean you have to wash it a lot? Don't they go gray? Every excuse under the sun. The truth is you cannot have a stylish wardrobe without white in it because white 
is the glue. It's the foundation that brings all other colours together and enables you to mix and match everything else. So a big misconception is that black goes with everything. It doesn't. So black wouldn't go with this suit right now. So most people would say, I'll put a pair of black shoes with that. It, it, it won't look as nice as That's if you would That's exactly what I would do. And I would have had a kind of black sort of basic cotton top underneath or something like that, you know. Yeah. Wrong, wrong, wrong. No, black wouldn't go. In fact, right now I've got a pin in my jacket because even when I put a little top there, it really affected the style. I wanted all my skin to show because my skin is a colour and it's a yes. lighter contrasting colour against... It's um, beautiful on you. The yeah, colour okay. is so beautiful and with your blonde hair, it's really it's lovely. A Marks and Spencer suit. Yeah. Very, I think very I've cute. seen that one in Marks and Spencer. I always feel for my American viewers because I don't think they have M&S over there, do they? And they've stepped up their game. Do they have them? Yeah, yes, they can get M&S. Yeah, they, they, um, they post internationally. Yes, it's because John they have up their game so much. I mean, oh, it's so great much. stuff. Yeah, some really, really good stuff. Really good price point. Really good cuts. Um, they're cut for a woman's body, which and obviously then they do the three leg lengths as well, which helps most people out. So um, yeah, highly recommend them. Um, love love their colours. Um, but yeah, black wouldn't go with this. And what I see in a lot of wardrobes is a lot of black and a lot of patterns. Now, if you add white into that mix, you will be able to wear more of your pattern stuff with more things because we often use white to freshen up an outfit and to bring everything together. Um, I, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to rack my brain, but I've so done if it. if I had, because I mean, you, you, again, you're just describing, I think <laughs> that you have come and seen my wardrobe and <laughs> you're tearing. Listen, Claire, I've done that live on my channel before. We could bring the cameras and we could do it on your channel live and I will do you a wardrobe restyle. Oh my God, that would be amazing. You would find a treasure trove of disaster in there. My wardrobe is an absolute mess. It's it's visually a mess. And um, I, I can pull together some nice looks if I really put my effort into it. But I can also go about, you know, when I'm out just most days working from home i'm sure a lot of people relate to this i can go around an absolute state and so you you would find quite quite the treasure trove when we've done your wardrobe you won't you won't even though you'll be picking out perhaps um you know casual we're talking casual clothes here you know a jogging pant a top a, a very normal hoodie all these sort of things you still can't look a state in it if the colors all go nicely you will still look nice and you've paired the yeah. right pair of trainers with it. So when we sort your wardrobe out and it, we've got it to that stage, you just can't go wrong, honestly. And also we photograph everything for you as we're going. So you would then open your wardrobe door and you'll have photos one to 80 there. And you'll just say, oh, I'll have outfit number three today. I'll have outfit number eight. So <laughs> I'm getting that kind of adrenaline rush that I get sometimes when I go into a shop and you know it's that kind of overwhelm and excitement just when you're talking like that I'm like oh, that oh sounds amazing well, look it, I've said it live on your channel I can't go back on it. oh I won't let you forget that yeah <laughs> sorry just to finish that point off mm. it's not enough just to have one white top in your wardrobe you need the long sleeve the short sleeve the same as I was saying with accessories before you need the and when I say white we're talking uh, neutral light color so it could be white it could be an off-white it could be cream it could be a slight beigey color it's anything that helps to draw other colors together but where people go wrong is that they might have the white t-shirt in there but then they look at the weather and it's colder so they're like i can't wear my white t-shirt so then they pick their black jumper and you're like well if you had a picture cream jumper in this scenario you would have created exactly the same outfit that you wanted to recreate five minutes ago with a white t-shirt you just replaced it with a more season appropriate item because you had it in the same color it's when you pick your white t-shirt then your blue jumper then your gray cardigan you want your white t-shirt your white jumper and your cream cardigan that's what's needed in your wardrobe because then i can seamlessly go from one to the other creating the same look without thinking about it 
So if we have, um, for instance, I've got a lot of patterned shirts mm -hmm. um, that I would usually wear, a little black top underneath or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, are you saying that white would always be the kind of go-to, if you're wearing a bodysuit under that, got to be white? Pretty much so, mm -hmm. yes. Probably 90% of the time, yes. It will just lift it completely. But even, so if I was to point out your top right now, even if you were to lose that little bit of black there, and of, often it's um, people are conscious of their cleavage, so get that, so we can work that into styling. But if the cleavage wasn't an issue for you, getting rid of Definitely that... Definitely not for me. Yeah. So getting rid of that little black bit there, perhaps making more of your necklace, so that was the point there. So maybe having a little pendant on your necklace or maybe two or three necklaces. And then what I would do with yourself, I'm sorry, you haven't even asked for this advice. I, it feels, I want feels it a little bit rude. rude. Is this inappropriate or is this no, okay? No, 100% not. Okay. So just giving yourself a little bit of a stronger shoulder there. So yes. as we get old, yes. So hide your black top now if you don't oh, mind. I've done so that. well today. And then the you minute I saw you, you look, I thought, you no, lovely. it's a... <laughs> you do look lovely. These are little tweakments. You know, on your channel, you do great with tweakments and showing Facial how little yes. changes can make a huge difference. So if you were just to pull that little top down there and put a straighten up on your shoulders on the one side, just go like that with your shoulder, just on the one side. Yeah, I don't... there we go. That that then will recreate a better shape and it will make you look... Um, when we've got structure in clothing, mm -hmm. we often feel better. It's when mm -hmm. we go more slouchy that we feel the frumpiness that you refer to. And often casual clothes don't allow us to have structure because you don't have a shoulder pad in a you know, in a hoodie, for example. But actually, these days, you can get the shoulder pads in the hoodie. You can get the shoulder pads in the white T-shirts because I've got a great range of them right now. But it's not just shoulder pads. It's picking the the blouse that has got the little pin tucks here. So that is going to give some shoulder strength. It's going to make us look stronger here as opposed to the blouse whereby the seam is like a raglan sleeve. So that is going to make us look more slouchy. Got so it. even in our ca casual, we can still create structure. And then I think you'll feel less frumpy in your casual attire. That makes so much sense to me. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I was talking to somebody else the other week. I had the lovely Jess Seaman on the channel, who's oh. a big fashion and style edit and um, yeah, you know, sure. she was talking about current looks and so on because she's a real fashionista yeah. but yes, she so was much. talking about the blazer being oh. the, the transformative item that can take your gym wear, sling a blazer on top and suddenly Absolutely. it comes together as a bit of a look. Are you a fan of the blazer when you're wearing one? And I'm also a fan of the long wall coat as well. The blazer and the long wall coat and in fact that was one of my next styling mistakes that I was going to speak to you about is the lack of variety of coats and outerwear in people's wardrobes. The amount, yeah, the amount of time I see somebody who has taken lots of care over their over their core pieces, they look lovely, and then they're, they're going out the door, they suddenly see it's raining, they suddenly see it's colder than they thought, so they put on their big puffer or the only warm jacket. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's everything that's coming out of your mouth, Melissa. And I and I'm every time I'm like, yeah, yeah, I could totally see it now. Why have I not put this together in my head? Yes, yeah, hundred percent. So the big puffy hooded coat. Yeah, You've got and me you again. Spoil your outfit completely. Nobody sees that, particularly at this time of the year. We're going into autumn and winter. So when we style at this time of the year, and I go to a client's house, I start with the jacket. I don't start oh, with the main outfit, particularly, obviously, if you are working from home all day and you're not leaving the house, then obviously you don't. But if your journey relies on you presenting or you just want to look more presentable for the one hour commute and the hour back and then the shopping in between or going to meet your friends, then you start with the jacket and the, then everything else comes into place. Um, I also start a lot of the time with shoes, particularly with the weather conditions. So the, the jacket and the shoes will be the first starting point. If my client is telling me that they have to walk halfway over London, then it's no use me picking up a heel for them. 
So then I'm thinking, OK, well, maybe I need to get you walking in a loafer. So what sort of coat goes with a loafer? Then we've got the coat and the shoes. Then we attack the main core outfit. We don't do it the other way around with the autumn and winter seasons. There's so much food for thought today for me. Yeah. There really is, just like before, but um, this has this has landed with me personally, as you can see, because <laughs> every style mistake, I'm definitely ticking the uh, box. I would say to, to help you summarize on the coats front, you need more than you think, but you don't need a ridiculous amount. So I would say a blazer, a long wool coat, that's a long wool coat. Long coat. Make sure you've got the seam on your shoulder here rather than down here on the arm because with a long wool coat, uh, particularly, I, I don't think, are you, how tall are you? I'm about 5'4". Yeah, so I'm five three and a half. So when we wear a long coat, um, it can often drown our more petite frames. So if you've got the seam on the shoulder, you're going to get more structure from that and it won't be so overwhelming. And then generally speaking, even if you're taller, the seam on the structure is going to give you more shape. So a seam here or a little epaulette there is a great starting point for a long wall coat. Um, and so I would go for the long wall coat. I'd go for a blazer. I would then go for a practical, what I call lifestyle dog walking coat. So for me, I dog walk, so it's got to be appropriate for that. But for the, some, somebody who lives in the city and they're meeting their friends for coffee or whatever, whatever it might be, a Uniglo puffer jacket, for example. But I think between those three coats, then usually everybody has ticked all eventualities. So you don't have to go ridiculous and make sure they're all in the same color tone. They don't have to be exactly the same, but you don't want one in green and one in black and one in purple, because then you can't change the outfit based on where you're going or what you're doing. So they all have to be in the same color tone. Is there a particular color of coat that works best? Because of course, you know, most of us go for black or really yeah, dark definitely not black. Color. Black does not work the best at all. Think about your, you, how you feel on those frumpier days where you haven't got makeup and you're pale and then you put black here. That is just going to completely drain you. It makes us look older. Not, we're not talking your 16 year old girl, they can carry any color off at this age. But unfortunately for us, we look older. It shows up the wrinkles, blah, blah, blah. So um, color wise, then I would say more of a beige tone, more of a uh, grey, a beige, a light brown or a camel colour coat okay. works better, but definitely the lighter tones. Navy can work quite well as well. It's less harsh than black, um, but it, um, it still then doesn't take you into the earlier seasons, the like the, a day like today, where yeah. a lighter wool coat, you won't, you've got the warmth from it, but you don't look like you you know, you think it's four degrees out and you're freezing cold. So yeah. I'd say a lighter colour coat probably is more valuable in your wardrobe. OK, well, again, I have learned so much and <laughs> it sounds like uh, there could be a fun and slightly terrifying opportunity down the line for uh, for, for us to actually piece, rummage yeah. through my wardrobe and you can see Let's do it. just what I'm talking about. Yeah, we'd you love do to do it so that well. Point. Thank you so much. And I look forward to the next time already. Loved it. No problem at all. Thank you very much for having me. Really enjoyed talking to you. So what tips did you pick up from Melissa there? And were any of you making some of the same style mistakes as me? Let me know in the comments below. A reminder that you'll find a link to Melissa's brilliant channel in the description below too. And I'm also going to link there to our previous conversation where she shares how to dress to flatter your individual body shape. And that is well worth a watch. For more information and advice around how to age well, look and feel good for longer, check out my website, honest.scot. It's linked below too. And if you scroll down to the bottom of any page, you can sign up for my monthly newsletter where I round up all the very latest from me so you don't miss a thing. Finally, by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing or following if you were listening on the podcast, you'll be supporting this channel and helping me to grow it to bring you more brilliant guests like Melissa. But for now, thank you so much for being here today.